Steven Zwick um, has a passion for microbial ecology, exploring microbial impacts on health and the environment. Please welcome Steven Zwick. And of course, I'm not going to speak about anything pertaining to microbial ecology, but that's sort of um, a side tangent. Um, today, I'm going to start, I'm going to speak about cranial facial development. Uh, a lot of it's and how that impacts sleep, sleeping and breathing, and in turn, your metabolic uh, health and psychiatry. Um, a lot of the, I'm not a clinician. A lot of what I'm gonna speak about is based upon my own experience, so hopefully it has some expandability to other people's experiences, but I, um, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not, again, I'm not a clinician, so uh, I'm not making that assurance. Um, most, uh, most of the health discussion that I hear, uh, oh, I can read it down here, <laughs> uh, revolves around, um, you know, dietary preferences. And when they talk about sleep, it's usually in the context of, of, uh, of sleep etiquette, of reducing blue light, uh, getting morning light, sleeping in complete dark. You know, I do all of those things. Those are all great, and they're part of what I've uh, adopted. But if you have um, a physiological problem, those, those can only go so far. Um, so how you, how you can, you know, some symptoms as to whether you've you're developed or had problems, and you may not be even fully cognizant of them. Um, many people nowadays, if you've had braces, wisdom teeth extractions, um, or, you know, poor posture, you're a mouth breather, uh, you snore. These can all be signs that you've had poor uh, cranial facial development. Um, and poor cranial facial development uh, is, if you see in the, uh, this was do documented when, uh, once, once Weston Price uh, looked at people that ate ancestral diets, had full, uh, full wide jaws and teeth, and then within a generation of eating modern diets, their faces became deformed. And some of this in, more currently, or one of the big problems is that facial development is, is very much a uh, uh, epigenetic expression of, of environmental factors, including and especially eating uh, soft foods, not chewing enough as an infant, because you, you need that action to develop a, a wide and uh, expansive jaw. Um, there's, there's other things with bottle feeding and even uh, possibly diets that are low in fat soluble vitamins and even um, also you know, if your mother has uh, apnea herself in utero, some suggest that that can lead to some poor facial development. Um, so how this manifests itself, you can see, whoops, wrong one. If you have a, a narrow, a V-shaped, as opposed to a U-shaped a, a uh, jaw, upper palate you're in your mandible, if you have a recessed chin, um, there are other features shown here of, an, of a more physiological appropriate face and um, one that's deformed, uh, a, a hunter that ate a wide diet and modern man who is now eating a very, has a much narrower and skinny face. So all of these, lead to a lot of problems with not having enough, uh, not, not enough room in your, in your mouth for your teeth, thus the crooked teeth and, and teeth extractions. Also, there's insufficient room for your tongue. And some of the other negative con consequences that your, your upper, whoops, I keep pushing the wrong, the, the, upper part of your palate is the underside 
of your nasal cavity. So when your arch is too high due to having too narrow of a palate, it deviates your septum, which in turn um, reduce, reduces your ability to breathe through your nose. And there you're becoming a mouth breather both while awake and while asleep. Um, and that in turn, uh, a narrow maxilla and mandible also pushes your tongue back into your throat, narrowing your passageway because there's not enough room for your tongue. Um, and if you're breathing through your nose, you're, you're not getting very much nitric oxide that you get from your nasal cavity. That, ni nitric, that nitric oxide has a lot of functions. One, it acts as a viricide to kill any um, viruses that you may inhale. Or and it also is a vasodilator, so it increases your blood oxygen concentrations. And um, some of the other physiological problems are sleep disrupted breathing due to the tongue going back in your throat. And uh, those disruptions put a lot of additional stress on your body. And I'll, I'll discuss some of my own personal N1 in a, in a little bit. Um, the metabolic impacts, if you have that stress and it's leading to excess cortisol, that cortisol can trigger, where am I over here? Um, I keep, sorry. Um, that excess cortisol can lead to catabolism of amino acids um, and, and which in turn trigger pyruvate. So instead of being utilized by your muscles, that, 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 those in turn go back to your liver and, uh, and, and trigger glyconeogenesis. So you're getting, so even if you're on a low carb diet, you can be uh, producing excess blood glucose due to the stress of having those apnea events while you're asleep. Additionally, if you're, if you're having those disruptions while you're asleep and you're having um, hypox hypoxia and hypox hypoxemia due to lower blood oxygen saturation levels, that in turn can trigger um, lactate, which, in which also can trigger the gluco neogenesis pathway. Um, and of course, like I, I mentioned before, when you have that elevated stress from sleep disruptions and excess cortisol, that in turn can lead to mitochondrial dysfunction, which if you've read Chris's book, I, uh, Chris Palmer's book, Brain Energy, um, I thought he should have subtitled, it's the, it's the mitochondria stupid. Um, because after a certain while, you know, when you have that continuous stress and that continuous dysfunction and it, it impedes, it, sleep becomes a root cause more than a, than a, than a symptom. Because a lot of the time you look at the, the psychiatric effects impacting your, your sleep, but it could be the other way around, which is what I suggest for certain people is, because that's sort of my, um, my story. Uh, you know, I had a lot of, when I look back in retrospect, I'm able to figure it out. I couldn't figure out back then what <laughs> was occurring, unfortunately. Uh, so, you know, I had braces and with them teased to the extraction. And when I went to college, there was a loss of structure. I did, started doing all-nighters, stopped sleeping, had my own uh, psychiatric uh, issues that led me to being uh, hospitalized as well. Um, again, in my late 20s, I had uh, sleep studies done that revealed multiple sleep disorders. I had 150 disruptions per hour, so I never got into stage one or two sleep. Um, I had 50 from restless legs, 50 from periodic uh, limb movement disorder, and 50 from uh, sleep apnea. I was put on Permax for the movement disorders and CPAP for the apnea, but I don't know, back then in the 1990s, those, those CPAPs were like 
big machines and you couldn't sleep with them. So I ultimately had a uvalectomy, a tonsillectomy, and my deviated septum repaired. But unfortunately, those things really didn't, they temporarily helped give me more room in my throat, but they didn't really fix the, the structural problem, the, the cranial facial development. Um, I also went to, you know, I went around 2012, I went from a high carb vegan diet to a ketogenic diet because um, I had read about some, you know, read some science papers in pertaining to uh, the, the help of a ketogenic genic diet with some neuro, neurological disorders, which allowed me to get off the Requip, which had replaced my Permax. Um, but despite this low carb diet in 2018, when I had some blood work done, I was like, why is my blood sugar so high? And I couldn't figure it out. Um, so that's, and I, I was also, you know, I wasn't like super high, but my, my insulin, I was at 12.7, so it wasn't very good either, and I wasn't able to really lose weight. Um, so I again had a new sleep study done, just a, a take-home one, and I still had I didn't have the, the, the movement disorders, but I still had 60 apneas per hour. I, I never do anything half-ass. Um, and my longest apnea lasted 91 seconds, so I would not breathe up to 91 seconds. And I figured it out per minute. I didn't breathe 23 seconds of every minute. Um, so, and on top of that, I had extreme, um, Blood, blood desaturation, I, uh, my blood oxygen would drop to as low as 60%. So, um, so, what, so what I did, there were some options. I mean, I, CPAP is the standard of care, but it doesn't really deal with the, the, you know, the root cause. Whoops, I keep pushing the wrong buttons. Um, it doesn't really deal with the root causes. There's, there's a surgical option, which and there's a non-surgical option. You know, the surgeons say these don't work, and the people that use the non-surgical ones say uh, there are issues with that. And there are issues, you know, it, it's controversial whether you can really move your jaw when you get older, but, um, and the surgery is very painful and very intrusive, and you need multiple surgeries. And, but the, the, the surgeries, um, you know, it's, it's faster and it's, it's more dramatic. The surgery is here on, on whoops, I did it again. Uh, the surgery is on, you know, you can, see, you can see the shape change much faster. That's within, you know, a period of a year where the, the, um, the, the non-surgical takes much longer. Um, now, the big thing is if you have children or grandchildren is to catch these things, when, when, catch these problems when they're young so that you can, because then it's much easier to address them and, you know, give your food, <laughs> give your children uh, food to chew. <laughs> and uh, if they do develop problems in their mouth breathers or um, get that checked and try to get it corrected as quickly as possible before the age of 10. Now, um, personally, I've, I've, been, I've gotten some additional sleep studies. I went from 60, uh, 60 apneas per hour down to about 23 hypnea apneas, so I have uh, more mild shorter uh, apnea events. I improved my blood work markers. I, I'm still not great at, with my A1C, but I went from 6.4 to about 5.5. Five. My fasted insulin went from 12.7 to uh, 3.9. So um, all that stuff's helped improved. And if you want to do any additional reading, uh, take a snap of these three books because they kind of deal with these issues. It's not mainstream in, in the in the, in the dental world, they make too much money putting braces on people, so, uh, and they don't treat the body as if it impacts the rest of 
your face or your mouth as if it impacts your rest of your body, but believe it or not, your, your head is connected to the rest of your body. Anyway, um, I made it with 30 seconds to over. <laughs> okay, thank you.